To prevent rotation, screw in the special flywheel locking tool between gear teeth. Now remove the front pulley with its left hand threaded bolt. Move the engine control to the stop position, remove the fuel pump clamps and then lift out each fuel pump and remove its shim pack. It is very important to identify shim packs with the cylinders they came from. The gear end cover can now be removed. Take out the flywheel locking tool and insert the special oil seal protection sleeve into the end cover. Unscrew the retaining nuts in this order. Don't use a screwdriver to lever off. This will damage the mating surfaces. Clean off all traces of the old joint. The next step is to dismantle the governor. Release the speeder spring from the governor linkage. Then remove the spring retainer. Release the bottom pin and the top pin. Now you can take out the governor assembly. But make sure that you retain the shim washers between the pivot and the governor assembly. Take off the governor sleeve. Then remove the plates that secure the governor weights. Next, the tappets and fuel pump cam followers. Extract them with a magnet. And then identify the tappets and cam followers with each cylinder. Finally, the camshaft. Turn the engine until the governor weight slots in the camshaft are vertical. Remove the two camshaft thrust plate screws and the control lever tension spring. Then carefully ease out the camshaft. Using the special adapter the camshaft bearing is now extracted. First, take out the oil pump secured by two bolts. Replace the flywheel locking tool. Using a puller, remove the crankshaft pinion. Unbolt the flywheel. Unscrew the flywheel locking tool and lift off the flywheel itself. Unbolt the housing. Insert the special oil seal protection sleeve and remove the flywheel end main bearing housing. Now the crankshaft can be released. Take a manifold bolt and screw it into the center main bearing locating dowel. Reaching in through the crankcase, mark the center main bearing housing itself with the location of the dowel. Then withdraw the dowel, leaving the manifold bolt on for reinstallation. With the crankshaft no longer secured in place, it can be gently withdrawn and the center main bearing housing taken off. Finally, all the main and crankshaft bearing shells are removed using special tools. The strip down is complete. All parts should now be examined for wear. Particularly the crankshaft, cylinder bores, camshaft lobes, valves and guides. Only Lister Petter genuine parts should be used as replacements.
begin the rebuild by replacing the main bearing shells in the gear end of the crankcase and in the flywheel end, main bearing housing. The gear end thrust washers are replaced with the soft face towards the crankshaft. The centre main bearing housings, complete with bearings, are now fitted to the crankshaft. The crankshaft can now be replaced. When it's in place, line up the centre bearing dowel hole using the mark made on the strip down. Refit the dowel and remove the bolt. Fit a new oil seal to the flywheel end main bearing housing and then insert the special oil seal protection sleeve. At this stage, coat both sides of the new main bearing housing shim with sealer. Then fit to the housing with the flat side towards the crankcase. The housing is now bolted back onto the crankcase with the locating tang of the thrust washer pointing upwards. Now that the crankshaft is in position, check end float with a dial test indicator. The flywheel housing goes on next, followed by the flywheel itself. Take care to line up the locating dowel. Use the locking tool for final tightening. Heat the crankshaft pinion until it's straw yellow, approximately 210 degrees centigrade then carefully fit with the timing mark outwards. The oil pump can now be bolted back into position. Make sure that both outlets are pointing downwards. When you're replacing the camshaft, first fit a replacement camshaft bearing into the crankcase. Then line up the timing marks on the crankshaft and camshaft gears and check that the thrust plate is in the right position for the control spring. Put back the hydraulic tappets. With the fuel pump tappets, the long slot must point outwards. Now replace the governor weights and the sleeve complete with steel thrust plate. The governor pump rack linkage locates into the far end of the crankcase. Refit the pivot pins and shims. Locate the bottom pin with the spring link. Finally, replace the speeder spring. To refit the fuel pumps, first clamp the pump rack with the special rack setting tool. Then replace the fuel pump shims to the cylinder they were removed from. Rotate the engine until number one fuel pump tappet is in its lowest position. Insert the fuel pump, making sure that it's located with the peg in the rack. Turn the pump anti-clockwise until you can feel the resistance of the rack. Now fit the clamp and tighten down without letting the pump move. Repeat for all the other pumps and when the operation is complete, remove the setting tool. Should the fuel pump shims be misplaced, a piston displacement method can be used to find the correct number of shims for each pump. This is how it works. From the workshop manual, find the timing of the engine and the piston displacement dimension. 
Fit the piston assembly complete. Using a dial test indicator, rotate the engine clockwise until it brings the piston to top dead center. Then rotate the engine anti-clockwise until the correct displacement figure is reached. Once this is set, use a depth gauge to measure from the crankcase face to the top of the fuel pump tappet. Make a note of the reading. Subtract this from the dimension B given in the workshop manual and the difference is the amount of shims you need. Repeat for any cylinder necessary and when completed, remove the setting tool. The gear end cover can now be replaced. Fit a new joint over the two dowels and insert the special oil seal protection sleeve first. The bolts are tightened to the torque figure in the workshop manual in this sequence. Use the flywheel locking tool to prevent rotation. Then replace the front crankshaft pulley. Note that the pulley has a left-hand thread. Now to adjust the engine control. Move the engine stop lever to the stop position. Turn the adjusting screw clockwise until it's clear of the stop lever. Then turn it anti-clockwise until it just touches the face of the stop lever. Tighten the lock nut. Find the fuel pump G setting from the workshop manual. Place the special gauge at the correct G setting between the top of the stop lever and the top adjusting screw. Use the lower adjusting screw to set the correct measurement.